Hello my friends, this is Amner Hunter from AmnerHunter.com. In today's video, I'm gonna be checking out in depth a very cool mastering plugin that it's available for a limited time by the company Plugin Alliance. This plugin it's called BX or Brainworks Master Desk Classic. This plugin can help you out very quickly to master a song in case that you are a beginner or an intermediate, right? In case that you don't know specifically the tools that mastering engineers do. This plugin can help you do that very quickly and very easily, pretty straightforward. In this video, I'm gonna analyze in depth the features of this plugin. Also, I'm gonna give you some very important tips and advice that I follow every time I master a song. This plugin is available for a limited time using a coupon code that Plugin Alliance is giving away for free. So go ahead and check it out. I'm gonna leave all of the links down below in the description and also don't forget to check out the timestamps as well that I leave you down below. Before we dive into the content, my friends, I would like to invite you to my website, amnerhunter.com. I have some free PDF guides and eBooks for music producers and guitar players. Also have some free tools available, a huge collection of guitar impulses, some presets of some plugins that I use among other utilities. And finally, don't forget to check out my blog and this channel, which I'm updating weekly with tons of free content. So now let's get straight into the video. This plugin needs to be in the last place of the mastering chain. It can be in your mix bus or you can print the mix and master in a separate session. I'm gonna give you some tips. First of all, when you insert the plugin, it already gives some volume to the mix. It gives a little bit of extra loudness. When you insert the plugin, I'm gonna analyze further what some of the controls do here we have the output trim. So this is like the ceiling that we set. So the audio is not gonna pass through this ceiling or threshold. I recommend you to not leave it as zero because sometimes this plugin is if they don't come with a true peak detection, some peaks might go through the ceiling and cause a little bit of digital distortion and pass over zero. I would suggest you to leave a little bit of room there. You can put minus 0.5 decibels. Also, some people use minus one decibel, so one entire decibel of headroom in the master. Then we have the volume, which will increase the loudness of the song, as we see here in the meter. The more you increase this knob, the more loud the track becomes. As you see here, the ceiling is at minus one. As we set the amount here, the parameter. It is very important that we do not overuse the loudness here because we can get rid of all of the dynamics of the track. If we do this and the track is not breathing, you have this big mush of sound, it will be not good for the audio. So loudness wars are over. You don't need that much of a loud track anymore. I suggest you to go and aim more for a dynamic track where you can have clarity, where you can have punch, because this increase in loudness can remove all of that from a song. So you can destroy your good mix. Of course, we're going to listen closely. I'm going to give you some tips on how you can be aware if you are overdoing the mastering process. All right. Then you have the stereo enhancer. I would not mess around a lot with the stereo enhancer. I always leave the stereo enhancer at zero if I am using this plugin because sometimes you can also have face issues. They try to make the mix wider, but you can also lose the focus in the center of some elements and that's not good. I don't mess with stereo enhancers, to be honest. I think there are other techniques that can help you have a wider mix. That's a topic for another video and then we have the tone control first of all when you turn on the plugin it automatically creates a high pass filter here in the super low end and a little bit of low pass filter as well i don't know why this plugin does this just when you turn it on but anyway let's check out the tone control here you can brighten your mix a little bit you see here it's boosting a little bit of high end around 10k more or less it will bring a little bit of brightness to the song which sometimes it's useful you also can reduce a little bit of brightness then the foundation is a correlation between the low end and the high end it works closely as a tilt filter watch this you decrease this and you are boosting the highs and reducing the lows right and the opposite 
like a tilt filter where you increase one part of the spectrum and decrease the other part. I don't exaggerate this control a lot. You're gonna lose a ton of low end if you do this and you're gonna lose a ton of high end if you do this. So use it very, very carefully. We're gonna work on that, of course. That THD knob brings harmonic saturation to the signal, that sort of analog vibe that some analog gear has. It's gonna add a little bit of character to the mix. Again, don't overuse it. Then here we have this VU meter. The green part is where they recommend us the loudness, right? Because if you increase a lot the loudness and you go to the reds, you are pretty much destroying all the dynamic range. And dynamic range means the difference between the loudest parts of the song and the quietest parts. Even though we're compressing and mastering heavily the song, we are reducing the dynamic range. We don't have to get rid of completely of that dynamic range. We still need to have dynamic range for our song to breathe with punch, right? Over compression and over limiting, we lose the dynamic range. So be careful with this tool. It is very simple to use, but you can overuse it very easily. Aim for this and of course use your ears, right? You have here two modes of compressor, hard and soft. So I was playing with this knob and soft, it's like for softer genres. You don't need some heavy compression. Hard works better for heavier genres. You have very intense instruments. So for instance, in rock and metal, I would use hard compression. I found that it controls better the transients, the peaks, and also the dynamic range gets controlled better. Very useful for different genres. You can switch between them to see what fits better with your genre. Then you have four different tones. So it changes behind the scenes the whole character of the plugin, and you can choose between these four modes to see uh, which one is better for your mix. Up here, you have some other features as well. You can solo only what's going on in the center of the mix. So only the mid image, or you can solo only what's going on in the sides of your mix. Very useful. So now I want to show you how to use this plugin in a mastering situation very quickly. And also I'm going to give you some tips when using this plugin or in general, when you master a song, I have this metal mix. Let's suppose that I finished this mix and I spent some time with EQ compression, the levels and all. With this mix, I put a little bit of reverb on some of the instruments to glue the whole mix. Let's suppose that you are happy with the mix. So now what I like to do is sometimes it's better to export the mix, to import it in a separate session where you are dedicated to master. Because sometimes if we are mastering here within the mixing session, sometimes we are tempted to go ahead and move things here and the mix and the individual channels and all that, right? So I think that you are way more focused on mastering when you export the song and master in a separate session. So what I need to do here is I need to select the song from start to finish. I'm going to go ahead and export the track. We need to export the mix at the same project setup that we have 44.1 kilohertz 24 bits we need to export this here i'm gonna choose file type wave 44.1 all right and then i can go ahead and export the audio right we can put a name here and then we go ahead and export the song then we go ahead and import the song to a separate project right and this is how a mix looks like as you see here, it's not very loud. You have dynamics. It's very important to consider that we need to preserve those dynamics. Now here in the mastering chain, I'm gonna insert the BX mastering tool at the last plugin in the chain. A good part to master is the chorus, for instance. It's a good part to start. Let's find the chorus here. That's the chorus. Also, you have a chorus here at the end. Let's start the mastering process there. I am going to choose here minus 0.5 decibels. So that's going to be my ceiling here. Another thing 
very important that I'm going to do here is I'm going to bring up a reference track to not master blindly. I'm going to import a song that can be in the same genre that has the same instrumentation. It sort of has the same vibe as this song that I'm mastering. This is not about matching the sound exactly. It's more about having a point of reference. Our ears are very deceiving and they get used to the sound very quickly. So sometimes we need another song so that can tell us this is how a professional mix sounds like and this is your mix so what we need to get there i'm gonna import a song of a mixing contest where it was involved let's suppose that song is our target as we see here this song is mastered you can see very quickly the difference between a mastered song and a mix you still have some dynamics right if you get closer you still have some peaks and all that but from far away you see this mush of sound and don't get scared this is normal but also listen. Sometimes it's simple to notice if a song is heavily mastered because they are very fatiguing to listen to and also they lose all of the punch. So for instance, the snare hits, the kick drum hits, they are completely gone. They don't have impact. Some things that we need to consider when master a song. The first thing that we need to do here, let's choose for instance, maybe a chorus of the song. I think here at the last part of the song, we have a chorus. Let's align this more or less in the same part. One thing to mention is that we need to turn down the volume of this song, right? Because it's mastered. In order for us to make a proper decision, we need to lower the volume of this mastered track. These tracks need to be lowered around minus 10 decibels so that we have a match. We can go back and forth. So minus 10 decibels, minus 9, minus 11 sometimes in order for us to have the same perceived loudness between the unmastered and mastered. So let's check out the reference track. Very quickly, I can notice this mastered track is brighter than my mix. So they are pretty much in the same perceived loudness now. Let's start to master with this plugin. Lower the volume a bit of your headphones or speakers because I'm going to make this song louder. I'm going to set a ceiling of minus one and let's start pumping up the volume here. When you over compress and overdo it, just pay attention to the snare drum, for instance. If you start to lose impact on the snare drum, you're over compressing. You have the impact of the kick drum of the snare, and we want to preserve that. If you are taking a look here, if this meter is not jumping, it's not breathing a little bit, you're pretty much overdoing it. If it's like this, it's too much, right? So let's go back a little bit. Let's stay between these numbers. It's uh, recommended. Let's move a little bit this hard compressor and also the tones so that you can listen what's going on. hard compressor works better in metal i think the transients the impact gets preserved better with hard compressor this analog sort of uh, saturation i use it also very very subtle and it also helps control the transients a little bit i'm gonna make my mix brighter with this With 
this we can lose a lot of low end and add a ton of high end. I like to use it between here. Let's see what happens here. Now let's analyze both of the songs again. So this is our mix and this is the reference track. Please let me know down below in the comments, my friends, what are your thoughts on this plugin? Have you tried it before? Have you used it? What's your approach when mastering quickly a song? Also, if you want to share something with the audience, you can leave your comment down below. It will be very much appreciated. Before we go, my friends, I would like to invite you to my website, amnorhunter.com. I have some cool freebies for you. I have some free PDF guides and ebooks for music producers and guitar players. Also have some free tools available, a huge collection of guitar impulses, my Cubase mixing template, among other utilities. And finally, don't forget to check out my blog and this channel, which I'm updating weekly with tons of free content. Thank you very much for watching the video. Thanks for your time. I'll see you very soon on the next one. All right, take care.